Hello survivors, I'm Survival This, and welcome back to Risk of Rain 2. So we're continuing along with our character showcase, and we're going to be hitting my favorite character next. Single player, as always, for these. The Huntress. Now, either Huntress or Multi are the first ones you'll unlock. Multi, you just have to complete five stages. It doesn't mean all five in one go. Even if you do two and then three or one each time, you'll unlock him. But the Huntress is you have to complete the first three stages without dying. So you'll probably get this multiplayer much more easily. I would recommend probably playing multiplayer even just in quick plays. The game is a lot more fun co-op wise. But there's still a lot of fun to be had with just uh, single player too, sorry. <laughs> still trying to ease back into the recording groove a little bit. So the reason I like the Huntress is very mobile. And I'm a sucker for, bo for bow and arrow. It's just part of who I am. I love a good implemented bow and arrow. So the Huntress Strafe, it's basically just a 150% damage single shot from her bow. It is a homing shot, so that's nice. Laser Glaive, that is a very, very good one for getting a bunch of enemies together that bounces off one. A Blink, probably one of the best, if not the best, mobility skills in the game. And Arrow Rain. It's very good against ground enemies, very useless against floating ones. When I was on multi and we had the Wandering Vagrant, this ability is basically useless against them. But anyway, that's the character, so let's hop in and give her a little bit of a go around. Oh, just get out of her pod here. And immediately you can see she's much more mobile than multi was. Whereas Multi was kind of a slow tank sort of character, the Huntress is exactly the name implies. Agile, quick, and able to get around really easily. So we'll definitely be coming back up this way because of the little treasure chest or the chest we saw. Duh, I get. Don't need to focus that much, it's only the first level. Uh, not bad, because we will be sprinting a lot with the uh, Huntress, but... But I guess we should probably show off her kind of arrow range ability. So it's very good for if you have enemies on the ground, but once you kind of get airborne, it loses a lot of its ability or strength. Take those down. And just use the glaive. A couple of those guys taken out. Nope, already found the teleporter, so that's good. Yeah, what the heck, let's fall down. And that's one of the reasons why I really like her ability too, is you can negate all kinds of fall damage by using that little blink at the end. And I thought I saw... There we go. And that should let us open up. Yeah, it did. Now. No. But, like all characters, there are kind of trade-offs, and one of the things is the Huntress really has very low health when you look at her. Multi was probably double this at about 300 starting out, or maybe even a little less, but approximately that range. The Huntress, even at level 3, we're not even at over 150 yet. So all that mobility is very necessary to keep yourself alive. And what do we got? Ooh, that's very good on the Huntress. The Milky Chrysalis is basically your little flight ability, and it is perfect for the Huntress's play style. Oh, let's try to get this guy taken care of, because that'd be nice to get. And as you can see, the Laser Glaive has a very good range on it. And we'll get the Sticky Bomb. Now. And get that. I might not actually be surprised if there comes a patch that actually reduces some of the Huntress's strengths, like her... She has a very good range for the Blink ability, so I probably would see that getting a little bit adjusted. Bring her a little in line with the other characters. 
But, again, it's also one of the things you get so used to, you'd be sad to see go. Yeah, we'll just head this way. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's... Oh! I'm... Ooh, I was very mistaken. There's quite a bit here. Oh, and there's a lunar coin. Um... I think we'll get the go play. Yeah, the speed is a really nice thing to have on a character like this. Oh, and I've been here, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. Nice, just a little ricochet to give us the money for the chest here. And one of the nice things as well is her ability to be able to shoot while sprinting, so you can cover a lot of ground and still make money up with it. And I want to just get up here so we can get ourselves that healing drone. We should be seeing more enemies spawning to be able to get that last bit of money we need. Come on, come closer. I want to shoot you. There we go, I just need one more. There we go. I think that's actually all the containers that's kind of available for us this map. There we go. And just take a quick peek. Yep, yeah, I'd say that's everything, so we're already good to take on the boss. Just go on and get rid of these guys first. This elite is one that spawns. Oh no. Okay, it's the other kind of white one that spawns a little bomb around itself when it dies. And the exact boss I did not want to be going up against. I wish there was a way that when you used your kind of... Uh oh Let's try to get out of that area. Okay, that... We actually managed to get ourselves into a position where that worked. Well, I don't like how I just used that... Vagrant isn't too bad as long as you have the abilities for it. Uh-oh, 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 uh oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. And get out of range of that. Because that is easily its most dangerous ability. Because if you don't get out of range of that, you can get basically one shot by it. I was hoping we might be able to fly out of that. If nothing else, we'll at least reduce the amount of damage might take by falling. Uh oh, another one? You just suck. You just really suck. And get rid of the fire one. Oh, really? At least that time we had a little bit of a distance. There we go. Yeah, the Vagrant is my least favorite boss fight, just because of that Nova it does. It's not exactly fun. Ah, there is that old taken care of. And on to the next stage. But this is the... The reason the Huntress is my favorite is just how well mobile she is. How quick you can get around, especially with the right items. Let's try to get that one there. There we go. Very mobile, very agile, great mobility, 
and the abilities are a lot of fun to use too. Like the glaive getting it to go off and get a nice chain is really satisfying. Oh, another war banner. Looks like we're going to be rounding ourselves out before we stack up a bit. Now. Oh, another equipment case, but we don't quite have the... Yeah, we'll get some more loose items first. That's a very good one. I wish we had that for the Vagrant. And then there's supposed to be some kind of puzzle or something. Now. Okay, I guess can't really land down there. I know there are a couple of things you can unlock for drops by finding um or finding you're solving a puzzle in this area, the abandoned aqueduct. And there's a lunar shrine. I don't really have more enough to warrant using it yet. All right, there's the equipment cache. Ah, uh, what's this? Not a wood spring. Heal over time, activate send an ally. Nah, see. But would be a good item if we were in co-op. Not exactly in co-op though. So that's going to be pretty useless for us. There we go, thank you for the money. Oh, another one of those lockbox keys. And let's try going around a little more, see what else there is. I guess that little area is sealed off where we kind of took down the Dune Strider on Alaska with multi. What's this? Oh, just rocks. Thought maybe one of them was one of those. Lock boxes like we found. Uh, I think we'll go for the stun grenade. Take down the elite because that's a nice chunk of change. And let's see. Do -do 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 -do. Ooh. Open that up. Another shield generator, so that's pretty good. And what's that? No, that's pretty terrible. Like, it's nice that it heals a lot, but you gotta be out of combat, so... You're just kind of stalling for time when you're taking that item. Oh, there's another Lunar. And Lunars basically just drop randomly from guys you kill. There isn't really a way to guarantee it, it's just you gotta kill as many as you can find. And what do we got here? Nope, Predatory Instincts. Getting ourselves a nice variety build so far. Uh, yeah, just leave the Glaive to take care of those. I just want to take a look along here, in case there's anything. There's... oh, that's just a pot. I, want, I was going to say, I had no idea what that was. I've never seen it before, but it was just a pot knocked over. And we will try to get that little guy. So, oh, what the hell, we'll do a combat shrine. Get us some extra money. Oh, 
That's the little suicide bomber, basically, or self-destruct to watch out for. Okay. So that's all of that taken care of. Oh, mine the bomb pots. Oh, look at all these guys coming over to find us. And that's where it's really satisfying. So that's a missile drone. That'll be a bit of help for the boss coming up. Okay. Let's go take care of the teleport. I think we've been fooling around enough. Yeah, we got... Oh, perfect. This is actually one that I really don't mind getting this, though. Given my poor missile drone a bit of a beating there. There we go. Nice and easy. Once you have an enemy that's ground based, you're really able to get a lot of damage in with the arrow rate. And just do a little more cleanup. Now, the Huntress is my favorite, and she is also the one that I've gotten the most progress on. Because with her solo, I've been able to get up to nine stages complete. Once you get up past the... I guess it'd be the sixth stage, things get pretty intense. Gotta wait on this to fully charge. Do a little bit of running around, get some time. There we go. Yeah, I think we may be able to get to the fourth stage. As long as we don't get something like the magma worm. Well, actually, because of our extra mobility, I don't think the magma worm will actually be that difficult to deal with. And here we are. Contact Light Survivor Camp. So we just basically got to run around, get some money, and then scout and see what's available to us. Anything tucked in there? A uh, little time chest, but we're past the past the window. We'll be able to open that. Yeah, might as well just take this guy on. Now, I thought this was just kind of like a little mini-boss. It might actually be classified as a boss in its own right. Okay, so let's try to find ourselves some goodies. Speaking of, there's our first. Ooh, extra damage to bosses. Very nice to get because I think it might be in the hard difficulty or might be the next one. Sometimes you have to start dealing with two or three bosses per teleport. Ooh. Really getting outfitted to take on bosses now. Because, what do we got? So that's three. Your initial one, I think, is plus 20% damage against a boss enemy. And then each one adds 10% on top of that. So we're up to 40% extra damage against the bosses. And we'll just do our little match stash here. I want to take out the elites, because those one those ones give uh I think it's almost about enough to take open a chest all on its own. control, and earned ourselves quite a bit. Ooh, first time I've ever gotten this harvester's sight. And what the heck is this? You've been sequenced. 
no idea what the heck that is. Maybe we'll find out once we try and complete this. Okay, so we'll keep going along here. But one of the things I do like is just not knowing exactly what things do. Kind of self, sense of self discovery. Like, you could go out, you could find guys, kind of look everything up. But kind of find. It kind of spoils a few things for yourself. It doesn't feel as rewarding when you kind of discover or find something new if you just read up what it exactly is. Ah, sure, we'll be a boss killer. Those generally tend to be the worst things to deal with, actually. The little enemies aren't bad, the boss is who you want to try to get down so quick because of how much damage they can really deal out. And there's another little choose here. Um, I think we'll try for whatever the random is. Eh, I don't think the random was worth it. Whoa! I just realized. Okay. Well, whatever the Lunar Shrine is, it does. It affects whatever items you have. Because all of a sudden, we have 17 Predatory Instincts. Or 7 Predatory Instincts. And 14 of our boss damage. And. I mean, it should be okay. I say should just because I don't know if we lost some good ut well we probably did lose quite a bit of good utility from that. As soon as we open up the boss chest, or the teleporter, we'll probably be able to just shred the boss. So Lunar Shrine seems to convert your items into different items. Oh, that's just a guy we've taken out. Thought that might have been a chest or something. And this will probably be the last one we open and then take on the boss. Oh, the wax quail. Well, it's not bad, actually. Yeah, we lost a lot of our speed, unfortunately. Would you leave my drones alone? Thank you. Okay, let's see how quick we shred through this boss. And what is it? Don't be the Magmorm. Be something like the Beetle or... No, I will take the Imp Overlord. Thought we would. It still wasn't too bad. And pick up the chrono bobble. Help give us a little breathing room. go. Not too bad. And we're on to the next stage. Granted, I don't know if we really wanted to lose all of the utility we got from our items, but it is still very good to have the boss killer stuff we got. Oh, and there's a stone titan somewhere on the map, so we can probably get through him not too hard. Or it shouldn't be too difficult. And 
a little hard to see in here. It'll still take me a little while to get the hang of the vocabulary of just being back recording and talking with you guys. I think it's once you get into it more and more, you're going to get much more fluid in how you talk and easier to communicate. Like I know I kind of stutter and hum a little bit. I don't know how good my commentary would ever really get. Ooh. Hello, you. Oh, that should be enough to start finding our. S oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, there's the Titan that I was thinking of. Now ah, we can even get him all the way from over here. Nice. Nicely done. And what do we have for here? Ooh. I think. Yeah, we're going to get the feather. Ah, never mind. We at least made it to the fourth stage this round. But that was the Huntress, my favorite of the characters. You know, a lot of fun, really mobile. Just a lot of, just a great Agile character. But that'll wrap up this episode, so we're about halfway through the character showcase. We've got three more, and that'll probably be it for the series until we see some more. So thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from myself. And please remember, as always, survivors, to take care and stay alive.